Um, and uh, he also co curates Floor Venue, which is a series of talks which I can uh, well recommend setting up to. So um, I think uh, we've had a little chat before we started and sort of established a running order. So I think first we're going to start with uh, Jay, who's going to talk a bit about infrastructure and politics. So before I start, um, I'm just going to say that this is going to be a bit of an info dump and I'm going to be going quite quickly. Um, so if anyone's got any questions in the Q&A, please let me know. Um, and because I'm going to be going quite quickly to move the conversation on, I'm going to be making some sweeping generalizations about things. Um, so uh, I thought I'd start off with a bit of a um, smaller uh, topic. So let's wade in. There are a number of things um, throughout history of culture um, that, the, that societies have used to tell stories about themselves. Um, and uh, whether these are memes or whether they're myths is, is, a, is a question. Um, but one of these, when talking about the history of civilization, is, uh, is the history of great men. So Alexander the Great uh, created the Byzantine era, um, Caesar of Rome um, civilized the Gauls, um, built the roads and, and united Europe, and Genghis Khan um, created his empire and opened up the trade routes between the East and the West. Um, Dan Carlin, uh, who's an amateur historian and podcaster, um, talks about these men as historical arsonists. Um, and uh, the, what he talks about is there's the, the great men as an entity, and then there's the number of people that they killed. And as you move forward in history, um, the, the number of people that they killed Drops, uh, drops out uh, of human memory. So when we look at this, um, Alexander the Great killed 60 million people, Caesar of Rome killed 40 million people, and Genghis Khan uh, was expected to have killed about 100 million people in his lifetime. Um, so this is the story of great men of history. There's a number of other uh, of these myths, such as man's dominion um, over the earth, which is a meme of, uh, which is a meme of um, colonialization. Um, the way social Darwinism uh, has been adopted by neoliberalism to express meritocracy. And then, of course, this technology is progress, um, which is uh, the meme of, one of the memes of capitalism. Science discovers, technology executes, and man conforms. Um, I don't think you can get a better, a better quote than that. Um, so history is written by the victors, and it's also rewritten um, by the revisionist historians. Um, this is why Luddite is used as a pejorative um, because to, to question the technological doctrine of, ch of progress is to question the system and the cultural meme of the day. But here we are. Um, I'm concerned that the current level of discourse around politics of technology um, is held very much on the same level of critique as fair trade. Um, yeah. Um, fair trade does nothing uh, to address the fundamental structure of the supply and goods environment. Instead, it attempts to pierce down and build an ethical supply chain from, uh, from, from beginning to end. This completely disregards the fact that the entire system is unethical um, and does nothing to really fix anything. So the question is, why is your cell phone covered in blood, is a question uh, that goes far beyond the manufacture and delivery of the device. So history of technology is the history of civilization. Um, the, primary, uh, the primary concern of all humans throughout history have been not dying. So um, the way that we have coped to mitigate this risk of not dying is by building infrastructure. Tap, turn and flush. These are the three interactions that every day you have with infrastructure around us. Um, it, the rest is hidden. The key point is that um, whilst we interact with the tap, turn and flush, um, Infrastructure and the technologies involved in the infrastructure around us are part of a vast network of interconnected dependencies, um, and they are increasingly more and more hidden from us. Um, so this is what's known as a simple critical infrastructure map uh, by Vinay Gupta, um, and is a, it is an attempt to map the um, infrastructure around us against the six ways to die. So too hot, too cold illness, injury, hunger, and thirst. These are the six ways to die, and the map is, uh, with the individual at the center, is an attempt to mitigate those things. So this is a, this is a typical Westerner. Um, so if we take cooking, which is in the hunger um, section of the, of the graph, it's related to uh, the energy um, power station and the energy markets. 
It's related to the water, uh, the water of the municipal water system and also uh, sanitation systems in the city. You've also got how and where you store your food and you've also got uh, where your food comes from in terms of the shop and how it gets to the shops. Um, and those things are also related to the, the global food markets and the fuel markets. So this, in the very crudest sense, is the stack. What we're talking about is the stack of technologies that keep us alive. Um, and also allow us to communicate and transport. Um, so the stack is something, um, uh, this, 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 this term allows us to map uh, the hidden terrain of infrastructure that keeps us alive um, and allows us to, to, to speak about it conceptually. Um, at this point, what I'd like to do is throw out a term for this, and that is stacktivism. <coughs> um, and it's a term that I think is useful uh, in, in, ordering, uh, in order for us to conceptualize this, this vast interconnected um, network of technologies that we interact with on a daily basis. Because you can't have a conversation about something that remains unseen. So um, by beginning to have this conversation, um, I think uh, it's something that, that would be really useful. So just to quickly cover the stack. So this is a uh, risk and resilience um, analysis graph um, of infrastructure. It's actually in New York. Um, and you can see how the power, the, the power grid relates to the gas grid, which is also related to the water grids. But they are also um, connected, um, connected and in, interdependent on each other. So this also, in the crudest sense, is a, is a visualization of the stack of technologies. Um, there's Benjamin Bratton. Um, who's writing a book called The Stack. Um, he gives us some theoretical language around infrastructure, uh, which takes us both from the user up to the earth level. So every interaction that you have, either with the internet or with um, any kind of grid, goes through these seven, uh, seven points and then back down again. Um, and then, of course, the, um, the skim map uh, gives us a rough, a rough map of these technologies and how we map it to the individual in its relation with not dying. So these new economic geographies means updating the politics. One of the things that the Luddites understood was that certain technologies internalize certain ideologies. Um, and this is uh, both in terms of the way they are constructed, but also the way that they function. So the history of how the stack is built and by who is the history of civilization. So the municipal model of infrastructure um, uh, built by the Victorians um, consider consider the water grid, for example. You build a um, you, you you build the, the the water plant outside of the city. You control it, and then you connect everyone to it. Um, this very much reflects the administrative practices of of the Victoria, of Victorian times. Um, control over the electricity, gas, and water, and our relationship to these um, is an important question, because. It's worth noting that uh, these things, the water and the gas, were centralized far beyond or far before that they were privatized. Um, in this context, we should question the neutra neutrality of the stack and the power and influence that it has over us. Um, the same goes for terms that seek to obscure infrastructure, such as, uh, such as the cloud. Um, you know, it's, th th this term is, in fact, uh, a term for a shed full of computers just off of the M4. Um, so the political history of each layer tells us something about the time in which it was made. Now, our relationship with the stack. Um, skim, uh, the skim map puts an individual in the sample, uh, at the center of a simple model, and that is the six ways to die. The six, not dying is the principal concern of most of the people on our, on our planet, um, and that is something that we should at least recognize. So the personal and political relationship with the stack is having control or access over the means not to die from. It's having the means to heat your home, it's having the means to carry the waste away from your house, and it's having the access to clean water. Most political thought has centered around um, human needs, which are, uh, in pure survival terms, shelter, water, fire, and food. There's no healthcare in that model. Whereas if you were uh, to negate the, the ways to die, then, um, then that conversation is there. The current critique of global capitalism um, and the left in general is of Marx. Um, Marx's interest in factories and land um, is all pre-infrastructure, and it was written in a time when trade and colonialism and war were much closer together. Marx didn't see this stuff coming because it didn't exist. Um, there, were no, there were no grids in the time of Marx. Um, 
he doesn't give us a reference point in this regard. At the time of Marx, you, uh, you, you got your money and then you went and bought the coal to heat your house in your house. Um, infrastructure, this, this, this ability to keep yourself alive is only evident when it stops working, such as in Hurricane Sandy. Um, so what happens when you lose control of the means not to die from? Um, this is a picture of Athens. Um, <coughs> you can't really see it that well, but this is a picture of Athens um, from the winter, and there's a haze of wood smoke across the city. And that's because due to austerity policies, there's huge taxes on oil, and gas have uh, been put on oil and gas. So people have gone back to burning firewood in wood burning stoves. Um, there are a lot of ecological issues and health issues with this. And there's a lot more efficient ways of, 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 of gaining control um, of the means not to die from. So who controls the stack is, is one of the 21st century, um, uh, that should be our critique of the stack. It's not necessarily who owns the robots, but instead it's who controls the stack. Um, thinking about our relationship to the means of not dying in the stack gives us a far more, uh, far more greater leverage points than the traditional approach of the wage relation. Um, and it's worth noting that the politics that build a given infrastructure don't necessarily die until the infrastructure is gone. Um, it is the relationship with the means not to die from that should be politicized, um, because this is an approach that we can um, all share globally. Thanks.